Hi, James. Good morning. Manas telling us about uh, Shell earnings, which on the measure that the industry looks at, adjusted net income beat estimates. But you say there's a case for underweighting the industry. I, Why is that, James? I do. Well, I absolutely accept the Royal Dutch numbers were much better than expectations, much better than I'd expected. But the fly in the ointment was actually the CapEx number, which was a long way below what we had all penciled in. I think the industry was looking for around 16 billion. Uh, the number was about 11 billion. Now, that suggests that the organic growth that Shell has promised may now be slower in coming through. And the real issue is that oil companies writ large, the international oil majors, have relatively low free cash flows. And I think free cash flows where the market will now increasingly focus because liquidity is still tight. We need free cash flow to drive future investment and pay dividends. Meanwhile, you like, you say, overweight the mining industry. What's behind absolutely. that? Absolutely, because the long-term growth dynamics of the mining industry remain absolutely intact, and they are delivering high free cash flow yields. And after all, if one looks at the AstraZeneca numbers, there it is a story of how much can they grow in the emerging markets. And actually, if you look at the detail of the Astra numbers, Manus was quite right in saying they were bang in line with mm. consensus. But actually, sales to emerging markets were only up 14, consensus looking for about plus 17. I see more to go there also. And talking of drugs, James, Sanofi Aventis, it's all about Genzyme. 69's Absolutely. on the table. It seems like Genzyme wants 89. I mean, is there a middle ground? Will the middle ground win the day? I, I don't think. I think there's going to be a, a big standoff for an extended period. And I think the drug sector will go through a significant re-raining. I mean, you talk about the valuation of AstraZeneca. Eight times earnings, dividend yield in excess of 5%. That, to me, is a steal. How imperative is it, James? that the Fed next week announces, say, a trillion, maybe just 500. Would you be disappointed well, with 500 billion? Because no, we're, we're no, quibbling I, here I, over I, numbers, aren't we? I wouldn't be disappointed with 500. What I'd be much more interested in is how will the consumer actually respond mm. to the incentives for participation. And what we're very clear about is that whilst a lot more money going into the economy, consumers are actually choosing to pay down debt in the face of unemployment uncertainties and weak housing markets. And I think the Fed is absolutely right to go out and try and gauge reaction because this is all now about sentiment, not about reality at all. The Fed is doing everything that it possibly can and it's in uncharted territories. We've never had economic conditions of the sort that we are experiencing at the moment. You like consumers. You say head for the consumer plays, luxury goods within that. Uh, so you must Absolutely. be quite confident that the consumer can pick up the slack? Well, Is that the in message? A, in a global context, absolutely mm. true. What we're seeing, however, is a two-speed economic growth pattern from here. We're seeing relatively slow growth in developed economies, much faster growth in the emerging economies. That's where the big money is to be made. And that's where the Diageos, the Danones, the Roches and so on are making the big money. Which area possibly, James, do you have doubts? I wanna, I'm not saying you've got doubts about this area, but I want to focus on financials because yep. many of the financials... As well you might. <laughs> many of the financials have disappointed. Yep. Credit Swiss, UBS, look at the investment bank, and Bank of Santander today well, didn't miss. You know, there were some very interesting challenges for Santander mm. relating to capital advocacy, bad debt. We know that the Spanish economy has been having difficulty. What is very clear is Santander's long-term strategy is to diversify away from Spain. They've made that abundantly clear mm. in everything they have done and everything they have said. The, the real issue for Santander, I think, relates to the future dividend. And what is very clear is Santander actually intends, in effect, to have veiled rights issues through its dividend policy. I think that's not such good news for people who would hell Santander to get the dividend, because if you now take the dividend in cash, your position in the company will be diluted. James, thanks a lot. James Bevan there from CCLA. Now